Hi, and welcome to our city. On today's show, we'll deal exclusively with Montreal's canine population. Constable Ducharme will tell us of his experience as a dog trainer, while our first guest will give us tips on how to choose and purchase a pet. I'll be back right after this. With me now is Dr. Lucien de Desmarais. He's a veterinarian, and he started a hospital 30 years ago in the north end of the city. And the hospital is so well known that the people in the area just call it the Vet Hospital on La Jeunesse. Hi. Hi. Welcome to the show. I know that when I was buying a dog, I was really in a quandary. I had no idea how to go about doing it. I didn't know what sort of dog to pick. I, from what I've heard, you're, um, you're very good at, at helping people choose the right pets. How do you go about doing that? Well, for about, uh, well, I would say since I started to be a veterinarian, people always ask me where to get a good dog to avoid problems and troubles. And for many years, I couldn't do it because I had to work like any traditional veterinarian. But today, well, I would say about for 10 years, there's ways to go before purchasing a dog. Take your time. And at this moment, the services that I'm rendering, we have a questionnaire. Uh, once the questionnaire is filled up, then we have an idea which breed to choose or to suggest to the barge among the 143. Well, what sort of questions would be on the questionnaire? What sort of things are important? Well, the usual question at the base, like, uh, first of all, the sex. Do you like dogs? The age? <laughs> no, no, because they are coming to me, and there is a fee uh, for talking with them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it will take an hour. I will show the books, the pro and cons of one breed from another breed. But once I know where the dog will live, into an apartment, into a house all by itself, how many person there is, children, what age, sex, and then I'm having an idea which dog uh, to suggest mm -hmm. and telling them how to proceed to get that dog. And this is where that today many particular or individual breeders uh, are breeding dog for their pleasure, you know, because they like that breed. And most of those breeders are not very well known. That's why that uh, we form a group to help them to find that breeder and find the proper dog. Is it necessary that it has to be that complicated, though? You would not suggest somebody saying, oh, I want a dog going over to the SPCA and finding the first dog that, well, that comes over and licks your hand. You think that that's well, not a good Well, going at the SPCA is a good way, but there is a reason why the dog is there. So I would suggest that person to take a person with experience to go and help them to choose that dog. Today there is tests that may be done to uh, see if the dog is, let's say, not too much submissive, not too much aggressive. If you take a, a puppy and he is at the age of two months and he growls while you take him, well, beware. At two months he growls. Just imagine at one year. So it's a good it's, idea not to buy it on impulse then. That is right, because that dog is for a good 10 years. 
Well, I know that some people recommend that you meet the parents of a dog before you buy them. Why is that? Well, for the important reason that uh, a dog who is a purebred dog is done 80% before being born due to the heredity of the dog. The old saying that we say, uh, mother, uh, mother uh, is having her father and son. Well, in the dog, it's truer than in human. Why? Because the dogs are done 80% and the environment and the food of the dog is not more than 20%. This is my own opinion, except... Well, well what about that old cliche where you say that uh, people tend to look like their dogs or, or their dogs tend to look like their owners? I know a lot of cases where you see an owner and a dog walking down the street and there's so many similarities between the two. Is, yes. Do you find that? Yes, there is. Uh, there is some attraction or natural attraction, let's say, uh, between an uh, owner and the dog. But today, uh, with those tests that you may do, mm -hmm. then you may find, for example, there is a young person, uh, a girl of five years, and uh, there is a dog who is very dominant. Well, you should take a dog who is less dominant. And that's why that, uh, there is that book who is, uh, has been written, it's almost the Bible now. That book uh, has been going for at least 10 years. And into that book, you may find ways to do those tests before taking a puppy. But if you want to have a problem, you may also take a full-grown dog. Then you know exactly what that dog is. And with those tests, especially with uh, adult tests for dogs, Dogs do not lie, they don't speak. Do you find, though, that the, uh, the cliché, well, you've got some other books here. That, that is right. Yeah, well, right. there is one written by Dr. Tartara, who is a psychologist in New York, doing the same work that I'm doing, trying to tell the owner how to solve their problem with their dog. And the other book? The other book, those are monks in the states of New York that will uh, spend their life raising good German shepherd and praying. They also <laughs> praying do Praying that they do a good job? Or? No, no, no. I mean, this is their kind of life and it is very serious. And this is a very good book all around from the beginning to the end that shows uh, training and how to prevent problems. Are there any specific breeds of dogs that are in general easier to deal with than others? There is five breeds, mm -hmm. Doberman, German Shepherd, Giant Schnauzer, Rottweiler, and uh, Bouvier de Flandre. What is it about these dogs that make them easy they to They want handle? to work for you. Big difference of all the other dogs, they want to work for them. And the other dogs is not the case then? Well, some of the other dogs into a certain training will develop a way of working for you. but. Those five breeds have in themselves what it needs to, they always want to work for you. Now, you've also got this ultrasound technique yes. that you use to condition dogs. Can you tell me something about that? Yes. Uh, we have found that vibration is the strongest reinforcer that help us to communicate with dogs. For example, you'll see people that will whistle to call their dog. Well, those people do not know, but this is a reinforcer. But ultrasound is stronger than any noise or other ways to try to communicate with a dog. Really, with my dog, it's just food. I don't think anything else works except food. <laughs> that is left to be proven. Yeah. And you, do you have some sort of theory as to what the future holds for dogs in terms of how much you can condition them and how much they can do? Well, I may tell you personal opinions, mm -hmm. uh, traveling to uh, the States, even to Japan, uh, I found out that it is changing. Dogs of tomorrow, many chances that they won't go out as much as they are going out now. They will urinate, defecate into their apartment with the ventilation, and they will work more mentally 
with ultrasound than running. There'll be less Olympic dogs, but there'll be more quiet dogs. Intellectual dogs? Well, call it that way if you want. Well, how much could you think a dog can do, though? How smart are dogs? It depends on their owners. And how they train them? How they communicate with the dog. And not training. Training is the word that goes more and more, they scratch the word training to teaching. And how much do you think a dog can be taught? Then? As much as much as you want. They, there is the equivalent for a dog of a PhD. They call it shoot sound. And what can dogs like that do? A dog like this is proven for uh, obedience, proven for endurance, proven for many things. I think like the dogs you'll see after me. And do you think that these dogs can be very much of a help around the house doing things? If you like dogs, they sure do. But why dogs then? You know, I mean, why not a monkey in that case? Well, and train them to, uh, to help out in the house doing other things. I'll come back to that sentence that I told you. Five dogs out of 143 wants to work for you naturally. Even though they only have four paws, though, they don't have any hands. Yeah, but they, they do understand many things we don't know about dogs. But now it's going faster. They do publish. They do give seminars. And uh, the, there is the trend of tomorrow that dogs won't be a problem if the owner wants to learn how to communicate with them. Well, thank you very much for being on the show. And I'll be back right after this. My second guest is Mr. Raymond Descharmes. Mr. Descharmes trains dogs for the military, for the police, and for entertainment purposes. Hi, and welcome to the show. Peace. I've been told that when you're training dogs, you can have up to 40 dogs at once. The thought of having to, to take control over 40 dogs at one th time just horrifies me. How, how do you do that? Well, you take a time to prepare a dog and uh, when you have to train some dog, you have to mix with other dogs to make uh, control by himself and to control with the pupil. Or it takes uh, some time uh, for each dog, two, three weeks. After that, we put them all together to make a group. <laughs> and what happens then? We have to watch uh, to do have any contrary character with all together. After they accept each, down uh, we have a team and we could make a good school training now you train dogs for entertainment purposes i guess it's for television and films 
Yeah, so currently we are, they ask us for a movie or commercial special. Uh, I always train the dog for a movie. It takes a time because uh, you need the program they need. After that, you, we have to train the dog for the action for that movie. And uh, sometimes it takes about, uh, could say, one month, two months. Well, uh, you've brought some uh, photographs with you, I think, from scenes from uh, movies. Yeah, that is uh, for a police uh, movie. As a dog, he go up uh, on the fire. He have to push the girl over, down, to cut the rope, and try to put her safely about the fire. And after that, he jumped through the window to get some help because the house is on completely on fire. That is a police uh, movie about uh, canine squad. Isn't it very hard to teach animals not to be scared of fire? I think that's an oh, instinctive thing. That yeah, it's, uh, it takes uh, a time, and we need uh, that training when the dog is very young. But if we wait is uh, about uh, one year or year and a half, it's too late. Because he knew about uh, the danger, uh, the, we call the natural danger, as a fire, as the water, as the heat, as uh, raining, everything. Uh, that way it's, it takes more time. But when they are young, they don't know about the fire or the danger. And it's the best age to train the dog. Now, you've brought another photograph with you that I find very interesting. It's uh, a dog as an actor. You know, usually you see dogs doing tricks, but this dog really has facial expressions. It, that, uh, it, it took uh, most uh, two years to bring that dog we call a figure. You have one on the top, on the left is think. You try to show it's not interest or thing. You have on the right, on the top, you start to give interrogation. Below, you start to understand what we want. And uh, on the right below, he not happy about it. And the center, he look as a wolf. Mad. <laughs> He's <laughs> very mad about mad. it. <laughs> How do you teach a dog to do something like that? Do they really understand what they're doing? It's hard to the dog to be uh, actor because uh, we have to train him as a police dog. After he, he received the training, we have to teach him, teach him now it's for fun. Oh, so the police training is basic it's to It's the all base because on the police training, he, he, he's on every conception action as uh, swimming, uh, tracking, attack, every uh, object jumping uh, far everything after when is uh, with the actor the dog he have to react as same is uh, the actor it is the home the dog and the dog he have uh, to be react the same as a police dog but he have to be natural not aggressive is it hard for the dog to make that transition yeah it take a time it take a time to the dog to accept that. And uh, it's uh, the, the most part very important to try to figure to the dog, I will be mad, but I am good. But uh, when the dog accept that, now you start to have actor. And uh, sometimes you take uh, five, six dog before to get one ready on it. And uh, for uh, the action we call uh, rough action, now we take a really a dog uh, as a police dog, as a scissor. Scissor, he, he do always the double of the actor because uh, him, what he doing is ready and the other is acting. And why German Shepherds? Is there any particular reason why Yes, he's the dog you could train for any part, any training, and you have a good grade as a 70% guarantee you will, you will be do, you will do what you have to do. 
as a tracking, as a obedience, as a attack dog, as uh, churching, uh, dope, explosive, a any kind of work you want from that dog, you will have it. And uh, sometimes we take uh, other dog to depend uh, what kind of movie you have. Because uh, we took sometimes a small dog, one is for the family, and that is very easy to find, but they don't have uh, anything completely to do as a German Shepherd. Well, you've brought along another interesting photograph. I think it's uh, a photograph of a blue German Shepherd. His oh. name is Max. We call him blue because he's so dark, especially when the time he came very blue. That dog is a military dog. It's uh, the kind of dog they use for uh, uh, detect the enemy at uh, long distance. Maybe you can show us what Caesar can do. Sure. And also tell us a little bit about Caesar. Caesar, it's a dog, uh, six years old, 100 pounds, and it's uh, the owner is a similar owner. It's for his own protection. But that dog, he make uh, seven police movie and uh, five long metrage. And you were saying that it's very interesting when you said that they were making movies. You say that they have standards. They have actor dogs and police dogs. That one, he was the stand. He, he was uh, the double of uh, my uh, actor dog because uh, the actor is a, is a hack, but him, it's always serious because he's trained as a police dog. And uh, when we need a rough action, we use always scissor because <laughs> he's on it. I could show you uh, how he's trained for the, his protect okay. for his master. Uh, when he see uh, her harms, he don't accept any revolver, any rifle, because uh, he fell. It could be dangerous for his own master first and mm -hmm. for him. After that, we show you the way he could uh, watch the article his master asked to him to take it and how he react when somebody try to make fall with his master okay well why don't you show yeah. us i i don't want to hold the gun though you can no do okay. <laughs> i will try I assume the dog you will see the revolver. Oh, so you've got that so that you can't see the gun. Right? You don't have to see yet. I assume you will see. He want to like it. And he have to take that gun and bring it on his own master. Because I assume he take the revolver, it's safe for him and he's safe for his master. <laughs> See, he did not take a time to take off. How do you train a dog to do something like that? He have to see. We show him the, the revolver, and we show him that thing. It could be dangerous for him, because uh, we make a noise with him. And all, all the time, we give him uh, not good compliment. We show him the guns. Uh, that means for him, that thing is not good for me. It's not good for my master, you see? And now we show you when the dog you have to watch as an article, a wallet or key from his master. That's it. Now I have to try. I have to try to take it, which is small. Now I have to take, try to take it. He have to show me, don't touch that. He bark he and bark. Good job. As soon I touch it, it's the time he grabbed my hand, not before. You have to stay there and watch the thing around him. 
He fell to have a circle around him. I soon I come in that circle. You show me? Don't touch it. Now he could grab and he bring his own master. And it's so strange too because he's such a friendly dog when he's. He's no, very fr yes, good, yes. friendly. Anyways, thank you very much for being on the show, and you'll have to thank Caesar too for being on the show. Thank you. And I'll be back right after this. <laughs> We hope you've learned a little more about Montreal's canine population. It's obvious there's more to dogs than meets the eye. Thanks for joining me on Our City. Bye for now. Hmm.